you can and any anecdotes about why the airplanes at Biggin? Yeah. Well, um, so it's a rotary engine? No, it's a radial engine. It's a radial engine? Yeah, a rotary is the one that actually rotates. rotates so. Yeah, we haven't got any rotaries, they're a bit interesting now, but uh, this is a, a radial. A radial? Yeah. And manufactured by? Now this particular one is a La Blonde, which I believe is probably of French origin. Um, and it's the baby brother virtually of that one, which is um, a Ken Royce engine. And I believe uh, the firm took over Le Blonde. Um, literally a baby brother. This is just 85 horsepower. That's 120 horsepower. And uh, we can see by the state of the airplanes, that's a lot fatter and obviously needs a, a fair amount to it through the air. Um, this actually is the most recent one I think we've had to rebuild and it was um, quite interesting. We get them over in crates and it looks vaguely like an aeroplane perhaps when you start sticking them together. Uh, one undercarriage leg bore absolutely no resemblance to the other undercarriage leg so we had to do some searching around America to get two that actually matched. They're probably off both off Ken uh, rear wing aircraft but uh, not the same year by any means. Um, this is it one, the original propeller? Um, on this one, I believe it is, yes. The, the, um, that's the more modern aircraft, but that was made up by um, Sensnich. But this, this came with the aircraft, actually. It's the Sportster. I don't know what year, but it, it's the predecessor to the Cloudster there, which is literally the big brother. It's just a lot fatter and, uh, again, more power. And how many does this particular aircraft seat? Uh, both two seaters, um, tandem seaters. And the original design was for a trainer, or was it as a touring aircraft? I should imagine the Sportster uh, was a touring aircraft, and then um, the Cloudster uh, was, I believe, uh, several were made for Pan American Airways, and they were used as instrument trainers, and they had, uh, well, for the year, say, late 30s, they had quite a lot of equipment in them as instrument trainers before the pilots graduated to greater things. It says 1936. Was that the original year of manufacture, or is that...? No, I would assume so. Uh, it, it has that sort of 30s look about it, and the um, Cloudster, I should imagine, is also late, late 30s. Novel tailwheel arrangement, is that standard on this type of aeroplane? Uh, I think that has been slightly modified with perhaps English bits, perhaps out of a tiger moth or something. Again, it is a problem with spares with all these aircraft. You just have to sort of um, adjust to what you can lay your hands on at the time. <laughs> um, designed as a two-seater, and in fact, in its original uh, role as an instrument trainer, uh, behind here, the um, trainee pilot had a, another full um, set of instruments, but we've deleted them. Uh, just basic sort of instruments with modern radio equipment. But uh, very, very roomy aircraft compared with its um, predecessor. Any original instruments, or are they um, mostly modern? No, I must say that it, they, we have deleted the original instruments. Um, that's one concession we do make to keeping up with the times. They're certainly not new instruments, though, are they? No. <laughs> they're, they're slightly more modern than uh, it was designed with, I think. Put it that way. 
of course, the radio, you had to have um, the sort of 720 channels now, unfortunately. So you couldn't have the original radio equipment by any means. 12 channels. Yes, that changed crystals as you went along. That's the throttle. Throttle, yeah. Um, trim, the standard sort of... Um, window winder. Window winder, yeah, and mixture. Kenworth engine, which is just big brother of the, the blonde, and this is a 1941 aircraft. I guess it right, this is a rotary. No, it's not, it's a radial engine. A radial engine. A radial engine. Very popular with the Americans. Yes. We use the inline. Yes. Why would it be more popular? I don't know. I, I must say they're, they're efficient, tough engines. Um, they, they take a, a fair amount of hammering. They just seem to develop the, the radial engine, whereas we stuck with the inline type. Yes, this is used in a lot of air displays. I've seen it uh, the last couple. It always seems to just about struggle to get in the air. It must have been a yes. terrible instrument aeroplane. Yeah, it's, it's not too sparkling. Once it's airborne, I think it, it's a real solid ride. But the, the performance is less than sparkling leaving the ground. Yes, I was doing some filming at this year's air display and the airplane came towards me and I wasn't sure whether to lie on the ground and give in or to run sideways. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, we try and get them fairly authentic uh, from the point of view of the original Pan American Airways motif and uh, the, the wording, but um, we were working from black and white photographs and obviously we um, get people coming up always knowing more than we do and having got it completed in its sparkling new colour scheme, they said, didn't know it was yellow, not white. Yellow? Apparently, yes, they were a pale cream yellow. I suppose um, it's, it's a good colour visibility-wise, yellow as a training aircraft. But having just painted it, we thought, oh, it's going to stay white. <laughs> this is a really super aircraft. It's a um, Miles Falcon. And it is so efficient. Um, it's got a similar engine to a Chipmunk, a, a 10-2. And it's just about 140 knots, I think, um, cruise on, on that sort of engine power. Three-seater, one up the front and two behind. And it can still show a clean pair of heels to modern things. You see, it's a King's Cup winner in 79. And it, it really is an efficient machine. And it, it looks right, you know, it looks fast, and it is fast. Beautiful aircraft. And 1934, so it hasn't progressed much, I don't think. And I think it was brought back into this country in the mid-60s. Um, it's still got an early English registration, Alpha Echo Echo Golf. But um, it's nice to have one return to these shores, especially one as good as this. Is this the original colour scheme? Uh, I don't really know. I'm not sure... It's not a modern colour scheme, is it? It's, no, it's, it's definitely a period colour scheme. Yeah, it's in keeping with the aircraft. But I, I, again, having no colour pictures, <laughs> I don't know what it would have been originally. It's probably white. Yes. <laughs> is that the standard Miles cockpit design? Because it always intrigued me, that... Uh, sharp pointed cockpit where everybody else brings the cockpit design and the front flows in nicely with the top of the cowling. This is a definite uh, anti-design. Yes, it's quite extraordinary. Miles seem to go in for these rather one-off uh, canopy designs. Um, whether it's uh, aerodynamic efficiency, I don't really know. But uh, he, all his aircraft that I've encountered have had rather quaint canopy designs up there. Uh, but it's a fast aeroplane, so it must work. This is definitely a gentleman's aerial carriage. Very, very comfortable for the pilot. And um, very efficient aircraft. It's got some um, interesting innovations, really. Uh, 
odd flat sled too. You have to pump like mad to get anywhere. Um, but throttle and sort of basic layout. But I feel people might suddenly grab flaps rather than throttle on occasion. But uh, very nice aircraft. Have you flown it? Yes. Spoils with all the modern radio, like most of these aeroplanes. Yeah, it's got quite a lot in here, because again, it's a good touring aircraft, so it's, it's got the works, the transponder, you know, you name it, it's got it. Another Miles aircraft, um, a Gemini this time. Uh, twin engine, Cirrus Minus, sort of 90 horsepower, I think they are. Um, again, an efficient touring aircraft, 1946, I think this was manufactured. Uh, and the interesting thing about this one, I think, it, since its manufacture, it was owned by the same gentleman uh, somewhere in Bedford, I believe. Um, since it'd been manufactured, he'd, he'd owned it and kept it on his own farm, private strip. Um, it's quite interesting that it should have the same owners for all that time. He only parted with it due to his age, I think. But it's found another good home, anyway. Again, efficient, but very difficult for spares. Yes, like most of these aeroplanes, if you've got a source of spares, you don't tell anybody about it. Correct. How many hours on the engines? Um, quite low hour. Um, from what I remember from the logbooks, uh, fairly recently overhauled, I think. So it's got a good life in captivity? Yes. And uh, retractable undercarriage. So it goes along at quite respectable pace. Definitely a shoehorn. Oh, this is absolutely hilarious, this. Why do you say it's hilarious? Well, it's supposed to be a sort of two-seater, and um, it, it looks uh, like an early aircraft, but um, as a two-seater, it had to be two very small pilots, and um, it's very low houred, and we wondered when we started to rebuild it why this was. But when we completed the rebuild and went, uh, did the test flight, it had a 40 horsepower, I believe LeBlond, 40 horsepower.